Welcome to the Broadway.com show, filmed in New York's historic Brill Building. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Imogen Lloyd Webber. This week we hit the red carpet on opening night of Escape to Margaritaville, chat with Condola Rashad and the stars of St. Joan, and more. And later, we sit down with Hello Dolly director Jerry Sachs to chat about being at the helm of one of Broadway's hottest tickets. But first, let's get started with the news. What's the buzz, Imogen? The prom has found its Broadway home. The buzzed about new musical comedy has booked the Court Theatre, where it will officially open on November the 15th. Helmed by hit maker Casey Nicola, the prom follows Broadway's brassiest stars after they swoop in to save the day when a gay student is unceremoniously sidelined from a small town Indiana prom. Chad Bergelin, Bob Martin, and Matthew Scalar's Tuna will feature a cast including Beth Level, Brooks Ashmanskus, and Christopher Sieber, and is scheduled to begin previews on October the 21st. Wouldn't it be amazing if Broadway stars rescued proms everywhere? Can you imagine the Insta stories? Broadway's getting a new phantom. After Peter Yobak finishes his return engagement as the masked man on March 31st, Broadway vet Ben Crawford is stepping up for a shot at the iconic role. Most recently seen as Mr. Salt in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Crawford is a 10-year veteran of the Broadway scene, having previously played the title role in Shrek the Musical and featured parts in Big Fish on the 20th Century and Les Miserables, where he also served as understudy for both Javert and Jean Valjean. Crawford will hit the stage at the Majestic Theatre on April 16th after Laird McIntosh, who usually plays Monsieur Andre in the show, performs the title role for a two-week run. The 1995 Tony-nominated musical review, Smokey Joe's Café, is returning to the Big Apple. Featuring standards penned by Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller, such as Hound Dog, Kansas City and On Broadway, the new incarnation of the show will be directed and choreographed by Joshua Bagas. After a spring engagement in Maine, Smokey Joe's Cafe is slated to begin heating up off-Broadway from July the 6th when it begins previews at Stage 42. Opening night is scheduled for July the 22nd. No word yet on casting, we will keep you posted. This news isn't exactly surprising, but very, very exciting. Legendary costume designer Bob Mackey has signed on for The Share Show, the upcoming Broadway musical about the fabulous four-lettered acting and singing icon. Of course, Emmy Award winner Mackey designed basically all of Share's well-known and well-loved costumes throughout her career, including The Sunny and Share Show and her numerous live concert extravaganzas, as well as many of her red carpet looks. He's also a veteran Broadway designer, having designed eight prior shows, including On the Town, Moon Over Buffalo, Putting It Together, and Minnelli on Minnelli. Also announced for the design team are set designers Christine Jones and Brett Benakis, lighting designer Kevin Adams, and sound designer Nevin Steinberg. The Share Show premieres at Chicago's Oriental Theatre beginning June 12th and will open on Broadway in the fall. We're confident that this musical is going to look fabulous. Amazing to think he ranges from Liza to Cher. He's basically the diva whisperer. It's a tale as old as time when Paul and I start checking our air miles. Two concert presentations of the 1991 animated film Beauty and the Beast will take place at the Hollywood Bowl on May the 25th and May the 26th, and the lineup tapped to sing Alan Menken's beloved score is insane. We're talking Zoe de Chanel as Belle, with Anthony Evans taking on the role of the Beast, alongside Jane Krakowski as Mrs. Potts, Kelsey Grammer as Lumiere, Tay Diggs as Gaston, and Rebel Wilson as LeFou. Be our guest? Yes, please. Wait, we finally learned LeFou is a gay man, and now he's Rebel Wilson? LeFou is fluid. Go with it. This week, some fantastic Broadway stars announced their newest gigs. Elena Shadow is taking over the role of Anna Leon Owens in the national tour of the Tony-winning revival of The King and I, starting at the ASU Gamage Theatre in Tempe, Arizona, on March 20th. She previously worked with director Bartlett Cher when she played Clara in the national tour of The Light in the Piazza and covered the role of Francesca in the Broadway staging of The Bridges of Madison County. Mary Lou Henner, who got her start on Broadway in the 1970s and has played roles like Marty in Greece, Roxy Hart in Chicago, and Annie Oakley in Annie Get Your Gun, has joined the cast of the new musical comedy Get In The Band Back Together, starting previews at the Velasco Theater on July 19th. And finally, Andy Mientes, who has been seen on TV Smash and on Broadway in Spring Awakening and Les Miserables, will headline the Who's Tommy at the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. Sam Buntrock staging, which also features Broadway vets like Charles Brown, Carson Elrod, Betsy Morgan, and Lulu Fall, will play from April 20th through May 27th. When we come back, we get a glimpse inside the rehearsal room with Anthony Ramos and the stars of the Kennedy Center production of In the Heights and more. This week on Broadway.com, Escape to Margaritaville vlogger Paul Alexander Nolan takes us behind the scenes at the Marquee Theatre and more. The New York Times calls it brilliant, dazzling and boldly theatrical, and one of the best Broadway shows of the year. 
SpongeBob SquarePants. The nautical musical spectacle that Broadway's fallen for. Hook, line, and sinker. The Hollywood Reporter says it had me grinning like an idiot. Imagine what it can do for you. Hi, I'm Chris Evans, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Welcome back. The vacation vibes were in full swing when the Jimmy Buffett musical Escape to Margaritaville opened on Broadway this week. We hit the red carpet to chat with stars Paul Alexander Nolan, Allison Luff, and more on the big night. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling uh, like I'm at the end of the line and there's a margarita on the other side. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm feeling. I feel great. I feel so good. We've, we've done it. We've opened the show. Here we are. We're on the blue carpet. I just feel like I feel a sense of accomplishment. That was a great opening night crowd and we did our show and it's just been an amazing year. You know, it's all about escapism, and I make, I make no uh, no bones about that, or I'm not ashamed of it all. I, I, think, I grew up in a Mardi Gras culture, and uh, there was always time to have fun, which I think is necessary in life in general. And these days and times, it's really necessary to have a little fun. I've been a parrot head since I was a little kid, so getting to meet Jimmy and work with him, I was already like, even if the show doesn't go anywhere, mission accomplished. And then the fact that it's grown in such a great way, and it's now here on Broadway and we've opened it. I, I'm just, I feel so lucky. Escape to Margaritaville's easy breezy setting makes this musical a party for both Parrot Heads and Jimmy Buffett newbies. The only rule in Margaritaville, make sure the audience is having a great time. And usually a Monday, Tuesday show, they're a little quieter, they're a little, you know, more timid. It's the beginning of the work week. These audiences have been amazing, electric, and we've had to like, add a playoff that the band plays to get them out of the theater. We are absolutely doing this show for, for them. So when they come aboard and party with us and, 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 and take that permission we give them to be vocal and enjoy themselves, I mean, that's why we're there. We do everything to them. We like, like ask them to sing along. We dump beach balls on their heads. We get them up at the end. We've kind of really sewn the songs into the story. If you're not a parrot head, it doesn't matter. Because you're going to come, you're going to listen to the songs, you're going to think they were written for the show, maybe. So I think it's great, great for everybody. And the comedy. Everybody loves comedy. I haven't had anybody say to me, eh. They all said it was so much fun. And there are certain nights you know it's a Broadway audience, and they're not sure what's there, but you know, I know where the breaks are in the show, and by the end of the first act, they're get, they're loosening up, a few drinks at halftime, and they're roaring by the end, and that's how it's fun, smart, and, and there's feeling in it as well. You can't ask for more than that. So I think that we've been able to marry the storytelling of Jimmy, the comedy of some great writers in Mike and Greg, and it's just like this great, great music, good comedy, amazing dancing. Chris, you know, Ashley's put everything together. Kelly Devine's dancing. It's just, it's all a really good gumbo that is just so good. Lights up on Washington, D.C. In Manuel Miranda's Tony-winning musical, In the Heights, is playing the Kennedy Center this month for a limited engagement. We headed to the rehearsal room for a sneak peek at the lively production and to talk to the stars, including Anthony Ramos, Vanessa Hudgens, Anna Villafanier, and more about putting Heights back in the spotlight. It's been a lot of fun. It's a little overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of words and a lot of songs um, in a very limited amount of time. But it's a, a really, really beautiful musical. I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's very spirited. There's a lot of diversity. And it's very heartfelt. I think the thing that I've found that I'm most surprised by is the amount of heart that's in it. Well, first of all, this is Lynn's first hit. This is the neighborhood he grew up in, you know, and um, this is a neighborhood that a lot of us grew up in, like Latino, you know, black and Hispanic kids and, you know, kids of all different races and color, you know, grew up in neighborhoods like Washington Heights, Bushwick, Brooklyn, you know, uh, Harlem, you know, so this is like a true New York story told 
through musical theater. It's been 10 years since In the Heights bowed on Broadway. The cast shared why Miranda's infectious music still pleases both audiences and performers. The music, the music, I mean, it's brilliant. You know, you can't get any better than, than this, this, this music. There's something different about it. There's something very celebratory. There's something, obviously, you can't take away the Latin influence, which is my thing. Um, but it's also very much musical theater. The storytelling is very raw. The storytelling is very um, emotive. Music is bananas, my guy. The music is bananas. Like, dude, it's like in 96 hours, and you got that like halftime y hip hop situation. And then in the same song, you have this very Latin infused, but kind of reggaeton, you know, heavy um, Latin horn chart infused. Um, chart and then it but then it has like contemporary you know musical theater ballads and contemporary musical theater uh, duets um, again coupled with very bombastic at times just rap it's become so familiar with everybody you know I think everybody fell in love with it and you come in you hear the certain certain melodies and certain themes throughout the show and it feels like home it feels familiar it feels warm it feels comfortable and um, it just makes everybody feel good SpongeBob SquarePants' Danny Skinner plays the delightfully dim Patrick Starr in the imaginative new musical based on the hit Nickelodeon cartoon. Before he gets laughs on stage, he gets in the zone to become that pink sea star in his dressing room. Skinner recently welcomed us backstage to show off his favorite things. Take a look. Oh, welcome to my dressing room. I've got a few things I'd love to show you. Uh, five, to be exact. Um, Let's start over here. This is uh, one of my favorite things in my entire dressing room. This is kind of a shelf of, uh, of well, toys that I've been given throughout the, the course of this process. And so one of the first things that we got when we did our first like kind of big workshop presentation was everybody got these really cool keychains, but they didn't have a keychain ready for Patrick. But guess what? I got one of these things. This, this is a vinyl collectible. It's one of my favorite things. We have some of the best fans that have some of the best artwork that they send to us. And uh, this one actually came from a, a senior musical theater major over at Penn State. And she made this in her free time. Look at that. Look at the detail on that. It's crazy. Next up is something that I got from my, uh, well, from one of our, uh, our hair team, our wig team. Um, Kevin Maybe, who's fantastic, and he was actually in Chicago with us. Uh, when it was the holiday season, uh, for Hanukkah, he gave Ethan and myself one of these wonderful uh, pieces of wood that he kind of found, I, I believe, on a beach. And then he put some uh, wonderful air succulents on it. The cool thing about this is, is that it gives me the responsibility to keep something alive. Next up is yet another shelf. Um, this one is full of books. I'm a huge... Uh, kind of movie fan, as you can see. One of the things when I get here to kind of calm down and, and kind of center myself is, as I'm warming up, I'll pull out one of these books and kind of look at some of the pictures of it. Like, um, like I'll just take out one of these Columbia ones. They're just beautiful, beautiful books from, uh, I believe the 70s and the 60s. And they just have wonderful pictures and descriptions of some movies. But it's just a really great way to kind of look at other people, wonderful actors work and, uh, and kind of zen out a little bit before getting on the wigs and heading downstairs and starting up the show. Next up is uh, a collection of essential oils. Uh, before I started this show, I didn't really uh, know anything about them, aromatherapy or anything like that. My sister is a nurse and her friend, one of her studies was actually uh, aromatherapy. So she sent out a really wonderful list to me of all the different types. So I'll maybe put some lavender into the diffuser. It's a really wonderful thing that I've discovered through the course of this show that's very helpful and especially a wonderful thing that brings kind of peace to my, my dressing room. Another thing that I love coming into my dressing room and being able to see every day is this wonderful uh, picture from Squigs. I feel like it captures our show perfectly, all of the colors. And as a kid, I remember seeing all this kind of Broadway art and the kind of the legacy of that and always wanted to be like, oh, I always wish I could uh, be a part of that. Uh, I am now, so it, it's unbelievable. Thanks so much for visiting my dressing room uh, and checking out my five favorite things. And please come visit us at Bikini Bottom down at the Palace Theater to see SpongeBob SquarePants the musical. 
George Bernard Shaw's examination of Joan of Arc is heading back to the stage with an illustrious cast. Led by three-time Tony nominee Condola Rashad, St. Joan follows the story of a French country girl whose mysterious visions propel her to popularity and threaten the nation's rulers who get together to put her on trial for her life. We headed to the rehearsal room to talk to the cast about this epic piece. When it first came my way, uh, I always go for a challenge. That's what that's what draws me in always. The first thing that like got me sparked up about it, it's a book that's called Playing St. Joan. And it is literally a book of essays by like all of the heavy hitting actresses that are amazing that have played St. Joan and the challenge of doing it. I decided I was gonna get the book and then I was going to read it the day after we close. One of the great, great roles in classical theatre for a woman. Yes. I mean, don't sort of forget that. This is sort of Hamlet for young, yes. for younger actresses. This is a good example of a play written a long time ago, which is actually very resonant to what's happening now. It's a story about a woman who is not asking for permission to follow her heart and her instincts and her gut. And I think if there's anything we learned in the past year and a half with everything that's happening in our country, it's that we need to see more of that. But I think that there's nothing more timeless about a story of a woman who is so connected to herself and her purpose and doesn't need or ask for permission from any man or any institution to have that. Rashad is leading this company of men and her co-stars are singing her praises. We sat down and we began to read the play and I have the first line in the play. And then she comes in about two or three minutes later. And I was like, oh, okay, we're going to play tennis with Serena. First of all, she's about as prepared as one could ever be. She it's came a little, in. She, she shamed us. Yes. She, she, she shamed every, every, every man in the show. Made us all blush did. with shame <laughs> when she came knowing basically all of our lines. Yeah. See, I'm, it's funny, I'm hearing all the things that these that, that my castmates have been saying. I found out that I was going to be doing this play, and it just so happens that the way that I work is in order for me to find anything, I just can't have the page in my hand, so I, you know, I have to just get it all in my, in my dome before I come in. I don't know. She's sympathetic, she's gorgeous, she's a star. Oh, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing yep. that is just too little love. If that doesn't get you to buy a ticket, I don't know what will. When we return, we sit down with Hello Dolly director, Jerry Zaks. The New York Times calls it brilliant, dazzling and boldly theatrical, and one of the best Broadway shows of the year. SpongeBob SquarePants, the nautical musical spectacle that Broadway's fallen for, hook, line, and sinker. The Hollywood Reporter says it had me grinning like an idiot. Imagine what it can do for you. With two hit shows currently running on the Great White Way and preparing to launch national tours later this year, Hello Dolly in a Bronx Tale director Jerry Zaks is one of Broadway's most sought after, successful, and gracious talents. I recently sat down with the four-time Tony Award winner to talk about Hello Dolly's enormous appeal, what he enjoys most about helming big Broadway musicals, and why theatergoers across the country will be thanking their lucky stars. Mr. Jerry Zaks, Hello. thank you so much for coming in today and chatting with me. I'm so excited to talk to you. Hello, Dolly, the show everyone is talking about. Tell me, when, what was your first experience with Hello, Dolly? Oh, yeah, my, well, I was about 20 years old, which is now over 50 years ago. Okay. I had just fallen in love with acting in college and uh, in grad school, went to grad school and uh, decided to come into New York to see a musical mm -hmm. and stood at the back of the St. James Theater because that's all I could afford was standing room. Right. <laughs> and something happened to me that is impossible to describe, but it was a kind of ecstatic experience. Mm -hmm. I was so filled with happiness and I laughed so hard and I found myself crying at the end of the show with happiness. Yeah. And now, that didn't happen too often to me when I was 20. It happens a lot now. But, <laughs> right. uh, but I, I was just knocked out by it. And so I went back again to see, uh, I originally saw Carol Channing and then I went back to see Pearl Bailey and then I went back again to see Ginger Rogers. Each okay. time I stood in the back just like that and 
fell in love with what was happening on the stage. It's a huge hit, and it's mm -hmm. won Tonys, and it's going on tour. What do you attribute that dedication to it now with audiences? Like they, I mean, people are just in love with it. Where do you think that comes from? It comes from their experience. The tonic effect that the show has had on people is astonishing. I've gotten letters from people yeah. who have come to see it, who've been dealing with loss or uh, some sort of uh, uh, pain, and they've been astonished by how much better they have felt for having had the experience of seeing the show. It makes people feel good. You yeah, know? it absolutely does. And uh, that's all I want. Yeah. I just <laughs> Is there a moment, I mean, you've now probably seen the show more times than mm. any other human on this planet. <laughs> Is there a part of it that still gives you goosebumps? Yes, that still of course, of course. You know, when he sings, out there, there's a world outside mm -hmm. of Yonkers. It's like, I want to get out. Yeah. The guy is singing just about, you. yes. Yeah. And, it, and the number just builds mm -hmm. and builds and builds. And you can feel the audience just. All leaning in. Yes, yeah, just thrilled <laughs> beyond right. words. And finding themselves in tears and not understanding why they're crying, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a testament to the power of the material. Yeah that you know, Jerry Herman wrote and that Michael Stewart wrote based on the Thornton Wilder and, and ultimately also the Gower champion who, you know. Right, I mean, created the version that oh, you, yeah. Yes, that I fell in love with. And right. so we have, we have kept elements of what Gower did. We've added new things. I've changed some things. Yeah. I've tried to make some things funnier, mm -hmm. you know. And you yeah. have the incredible Bernadette Peters. <laughs> You've got Victor Garber. Yeah. You have Charlie Stemp, who is yes. just wowing everybody. Yes. What is it like to have these, these new cast members in this show bringing a new energy to it? Well, it's thrilling. You know, at first it's like, okay, we have to go back into rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And we have to rehearse this as though we were doing it for the first time. Right. And it would be the only way to treat special people like Bernadette and Victor and Charlie mm -hmm. and Molly, who has come in for Minnie Faye, with the res well, with the respect that they deserve. But also, it's real simple, Ryan. I take immense pride in helping actors give the best performances of their lives. Yeah, it's real important. And I know how to do that. You have this knack for mining, you know, sentiment out of places that you might have not found it before, or humor out of places that you wouldn't find it before. There's just is it is it just a gift or is it something I, that you've worked on? I've worked on it. You know, I look, I always I love loved comedy, but I love watching a show. I love trying to figure out why something is not working mm -hmm. and trying to figure out the solution. And it's great because in the theater you have the luxury of being able to come back the next day and make it better, as opposed to film where, you know, you rehearse, it's you tech, <laughs> you shoot, <laughs> right. you open, and you close, and you're done with that scene. Right. And you, that makes me crazy. Uh, just yesterday, I, I went back to Bernadette and Victor, the both of them at certain moments ring the cash register. They ring the cash register and they both go, oh, I love that <laughs> sound, you know? But both of them were standing behind the cash register and so it was not working because mm. we could not see them. So okay. it's very simple. I say, come move to your right, get out from behind the cash register, do the same thing you're doing, only reach for it this way rather than this way, right. and it will get a bigger laugh. So it's always, always in service oh. to that audience that you're always thinking. Yes, yeah. which is why I stand in the back. Mm -hmm. I love to have the audience between myself and the stage because you can hear, you can feel when the audience is listening Right. When they're being polite, when they're being driven crazy, <laughs> when they're surprised, you know? Yeah. And I just love doing that. Right. And now you have Hello Dolly hitting the road later yes. this year. Yes. You have Betty Buckley starring yes. as, as Dolly. How, why are you excited for audiences all across this country to be able to see this production? Because it's going to do to audiences all over the country what it's been doing to the audiences in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, people are people. They're the same all over the world, you know? And the values in this show are timeless. It's about people trying to connect, people struggling to connect, people struggling to avoid connecting, you know, people pretending they don't need to be with another person. I want the audience to become the third character with them uh, on stage. I want them to care about these people. And there's no reason that our tour starting, starring the great Betty Buckley uh, should do anything but you know, elicit the same responses 
around the country as it has been in New York. Why do you think Betty Buckley is a great choice? She's for a Doug? queen. Uh, she's a wonderful queen. Well, she just she's got one of the greatest voices ever. Uh, yet you know, and I don't know that uh, there are people who don't know that about Betty uh, because she's been doing films and television. And she's got a great presence, you know. And when she sings, it's so nice to be back home where I belong. You know, coming back. Everyone is going to cheer because she's back on stage, you know, and it's, it's cause for rejoicing, you know. Um, she's a big talent, and I think Dolly has to be a big talent. I think it's, you know, it's one of the great roles ever for a woman in the musical theater, that's for sure, and it needs a great actress. If you could, if you could come up with one reaction that you ideally would have all audiences that come to your shows to leave the theater thinking about, feeling, what's your ideal audience response to a show that you, you put up? <laughs> That's a good question, <laughs> man. Uh, I want them to laugh. I want them to laugh. And just when they think they're going to laugh again, I want them to not laugh. And I want them to get verklempt. Yeah. I want them to be touched. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I want to surprise them with that. Heart in the throat, kind of. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right? I la they laugh, they fall in love with the characters, they laugh, they fall even more in love with the characters, they laugh, and then when something happens to the characters that doesn't elicit a laugh, I want them to care so much about the characters that they are profoundly happy, the audience, when, the ca when things work out mm -hmm. for the characters. Thank you so much Thanks, for chatting Ryan. with me, and make sure you go see Hello, Dolly! at the Schubert Theatre here on Broadway. When we come back, Ramin Karamloo takes on The Greatest Showman. The New York Times calls it brilliant, dazzling, and boldly theatrical, and one of the best Broadway shows of the year. SpongeBob SquarePants, the nautical musical spectacle that Broadway's fallen for, hook, line, and sinker. The Hollywood Reporter says it had me grinning like an idiot. Imagine what it can do for you. Hey, I'm Sarah Bareilles, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Thank you for watching the Broadway.com show. We leave you with Ramin Karamalu's powerful performance of the greatest showman tune from now on. See you next week. Starts tonight.